coming. You are watching New Harvest Word and Sound and Global Ministry located in the vibrant city of Baltimore, Maryland. We're so glad to have you here today, and we're excited because Jesus is still Lord. Amen. So we ask you all that if you would uh, get ready, prepare yourself, amen, get yourself uh, up out of the bed, amen, roll on down to the table, amen, get your boat legged biscuits, amen, and be prepared, amen, to give the Lord some praise on today. Because this is the day, come on, that the Lord has made, y'all be saying, and we shall rejoice, come on, and be glad in it. Let's get ready for a very close time in the order today, and remember, he's worthy of all the praise. Amen. We want to continue to pray for all of our responders and all of our uh, te technicians and ambulance people that are still providing for us and all of us who are, are sick and shut in. Let's pray for them especially. And all of the families who are in bereavement, let's still a shout out to them and their families on this day. Somebody just say, he's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Yes. We're going to start off this morning because I believe that the Lord is still holy. Hallelujah. <laughs> You at home, come on, just get to the edge of the bed and get ready to get your square on, get your hoop on. For those in the sanctuary, let's get ready to worship because he's worthy of all the praise. Look at somebody and say, he's worthy. You are holy, oh, so holy. Come on, let me hear you. You are holy, oh, so holy. What a privilege and honor to worship at your throne, to be called into your presence. Come on. And your own. That's it, that's it. Let me hear you. Come on. You are worthy. Oh, so worthy. That's it. Come on, sing this morning. You're worthy. Oh, oh.
that felt like at some at some point I got the short end of the stick. Anybody here? I'm probably the only person in this room that felt like, why couldn't it happen for me? I'm probably the only person in the room that felt like at times, I mean, I did everything I was supposed to do. How come it didn't turn out like I wanted it to? Is anybody else here? And so finally, I want to encourage you as I encourage myself. It's my turn. I don't know, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I just want to speak to you, let you know that life and its complexities and its difficulties and its discouragements and its ups and downs will sometimes make you think that this is all I'm going to get. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Sometimes life will make you think that it just ain't going to get no better. Sometimes of all the stuff that you deal with and the negativity and the same old, same old, and here it come again and, and karma coming back at you, you wonder, is it ever going to work out for me? But I came to give you a word on this morning. Good God Almighty. While I preach to myself, I want to try to preach to you. I want to let somebody know today that it's my turn. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Uh, as we began to embark on this passage of scripture, we're going to find that in the context of the scripture, in order to fully understand the depth of the scripture in this particular portion, we have to go back to Second uh, Samuel, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse, because we will find that this young man, uh, Abimelech, didn't get there by accident. Can I talk here? A lot of us must understand that you're not where you are simply by accident or by coincidence, but it could be that God is saving you for something new. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, maybe, maybe. perhaps, perhaps. God, God is saving me saving for something new. God help me here. And what i got to let you know is that sometimes when you're being prepared for something big, it doesn't always start out big. Oh, God, let me just talk to myself here. Sometimes when God's preparing you for something big, it doesn't always start out like you wanted to. Y'all still ain't saying nothing. Sometimes when God's preparing you for something big, in fact, it often starts off a little raggedy. Anybody ever been in some raggedy stuff? Anybody still in some raggedy stuff? Anybody wondering when is the raggedy going to get out of my life? Y'all ain't talking to me. Look at your neighbor and say, but it's my turn. Look at what he says. Look at what he says here. In verse 4, in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 4, verse 4, look at this. It says, and Jonathan saw son... Uh, Jonathan and Jonathan saw son had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tide came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled, and it came to pass that as she made haste to flee, that she he fell and became lame, and his name was Mephibosheth. I want y'all to get this. Because what happens is here, uh, in, the, in the history, Saul was the king. Jonathan, who was Mephibosheth's father, was Saul's son, of course. And Saul and his sons were killed in battle. And because he was killed, that meant that the enemy was coming to overtake the king's castle. And so his nurse, his, maid, his maiden, she was holding him, and she was running, and she dropped him. I want to start right here and pause because a lot of times why we end up where we are is because we feel like or somebody dropped us. I don't know, I'm probably the only person here that's ever been dropped before. Have you ever had somebody all of a sudden be in your corner for some reason unbeknownst to you, all of a sudden they stop calling you? Uh -huh. For some reason, all of a sudden, they stopped associating with you. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. For some reason, they stopped making sure you was okay. In other words, they dropped you. You ever been on a job and then you was doing a great job and then somebody came along and maybe didn't look exactly like you? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And they went into the brown nose phase of business? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And before you know it, they got favor up high and next thing you know, you was on your way out the door. Look at somebody and say, they dropped me. Have you ever been in love with somebody that was fine? I mean, I'm talking like my wife, super fine. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Or, you know, like Denzel Washington for some of y'all. Y'all ain't gonna hear me. Or, 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 or Blair Underwood, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You know, some of them men that y'all claim to be so beautiful, so wonderful. And all of a sudden, he say, we done. You ever got dropped before? And I want you to understand the purpose of being dropped is because it is such a thing when you have your hope and you have your desire and you have your dream. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And you have your feeling good invested in someone or something. And all of a sudden, out of no reason, no hat, they just dropped you. Anybody here ever been dropped before? Amen. You know how it is when, when life was going well and everything was going well and all of a sudden out of nowhere you were under attack. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden everything that was going well is going wrong. 
and everything that was go, go pitted was going back. Everything that was supposed to be white was black. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Everything that was supposed to be up was down. Y'all ain't saying nothing yet. And everything got turned around, and all of a sudden your money got funny. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. And then this started happening, and that started happening. In other words, you were under attack, and you got dropped. And I want to speak to just a few folks because it seems like to me ain't nobody else in this room seem to have been dropped before. By virtue of the fact that ain't nobody saying that. But y'all looking at me, I'm going to preach to myself. I remember when I got dropped. I remember when I got arrested. I remember when I was told I wasn't going to be nothing. I remember when I was told I wasn't going to make it past 16. I remember when I was told, they told my mama, that boy is pure deep trouble. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. And so everybody started looking at me funny. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But they dropped me. But I came to give some news to somebody today that if the devil's trying to drop you, God said it's your turn. Good God Almighty. Look at somebody and say it's my turn. It was imperative that I spoke to you about verse uh, 2 Samuel 4 and 4 because if you don't understand why you got dropped, then you can never appreciate when you get picked up. Now, here's the reason why Mephibosheth got dropped. The reason why he got dropped was because of fear. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. No, it wasn't the fear of him, but it was the fear of the people who was over him. Y'all ain't talking to me. His maid got afraid, got his nurse got afraid, his his people around him got afraid. And you have to be careful when you're around people who are afraid of your success. Oh, y'all didn't hear me through here. You gotta be careful of people who are afraid that you're gonna mess around and be somebody. You gotta be afraid of people who get themselves close to you only to see what they can glean from you so they can try to outglean you. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Look at somebody say it's my turn. It's my turn. Look at what he says here. So he was dropped because they were fearful. And whenever people are fearful, uh, uh, my daddy used to always say, it's, it's, it's the fine print that kills the contract. And what he meant is, is that when you get in a rush, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. You forget the, the important thing. You know how when it's all about you, you forget to stop and give God some praise. When you made it out of somewhere close, you forgot to say, God, thank you. When it could have been and it should have been, but it wasn't because of his grace, you forgot to give him glory. Look at your name and say, don't go too fast. You know the story of the rabbit and the tortoise, amen? And everybody knew on the top that the rabbit was faster. And everybody knew that the tortoise was slow. But we can learn something from the tortoise, see? Because the tortoise understands that consistency. God, help me here. Staying at my pace, y'all ain't saying that. Staying where God put me. Paul said it this way. He said, whatever state I find myself in, there with to be content. I don't have to be as fast as you. I don't have to pray as well as you. I don't have to preach as good as you. All I got to do is stay in my lane. Because if I stay in my lane, sooner or later, look at somebody and say, it's going to be my turn. It bothers me, it bothers me when, when we take time to compare ourselves to everybody else. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. It bothers me when we take time to compare our lives to everybody else. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It bothers me when you look at the success of somebody else and you try to wonder how come I'm not successful. But you got to say to yourself, I'm running at a different pace than you. Everybody can't jump as high as I can. Some people can jump higher than I can. Some people can't jump at all. But look at your name and say, it's my turn. It's my turn. Look at what he says here. Look at what he says here. And you got to understand there's a reason why he got dropped. There's a reason why. And I said, number one, the reason why he got dropped was because of fear. Y'all got to hear me here. Because fear will turn your life upside down. Look at somebody say, neighbor. Fear will turn your life upside down. I probably wouldn't be able to have my life turned upside down. I'm probably the only here ever had these go a complete another way. I'm probably the only here that ever had something turn around that shouldn't have been turned around. But I stop by to tell you, look at somebody and say, it's my turn. It's my turn. Yes. It says here, we're now in 2 Samuel, uh, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse. It says here, uh, 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 Mephibosheth was dropped because his nun, his nanny, was fearful uh, and she dropped him. Now here's what I want you to get. Whenever you get dropped, you become lame. Whether it's mentally lame, physically lame, emotionally lame, y'all ain't saying that, spiritually lame, or communicably lame, you become lame. Now, in this text, the word lame is another word we've adopted called handicap. And see, once people think, once people think, they said, once people think that you are handicapped, Come on, they will always look at you sideways. I don't know, maybe when you was in school, you couldn't read as well as some of the other kids. And everybody looked at you sideways. 
Maybe, maybe you, you didn't comprehend the mathematical equations as quick as everybody else, and they look at you sideways. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. And, and maybe, maybe, maybe uh, you had strict parents, and you couldn't stay out all night and all wrong like everybody else, and they look at you sideways. Maybe you had to come on. You know, when I was growing up, see, we had a rule, and the rule was that when that light turned white, you better have your behind on the front porch or in the house. And see, I learned the art of the light. And the art of the light was that before the light goes completely bright, it starts off pink. And it was approximately four and a half minutes before it went from pink to light. And what the good part is that the lights were universal in the community. So if I was three blocks away and that light turned pink, that meant the light in front of my house was turning pink. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Look at your name and say, what we need. It's universal pinkness. <laughs> we need the whole community, amen, to turn on at the same time. We need the whole community to love at the same time. We need the whole community to be involved at the same time. We need the whole community to be concerned about our youth at the same time. We need the whole community to be concerned about our elders at the same time. But look like to me, somebody got dropped. So he got dropped here because... He got dropped because uh, he, he was fearful. Number one, he was fearful. Number two, because she's in a rush. And you have to be careful because when stuff happens in your life, don't be in such a rush to brush by it. The Bible says, and we know that all things work together for the good. And I gotta say this, and they're gonna some of men are like this. They may not understand it, but there's some things that happened in my life that I wasn't too happy about. There's some things that happened in my life I couldn't see why God did that. Y'all, anybody else ever? There's some stuff that's happened. I'd be like, well, God, all you had to do was tell me this. God, why I had to lose this? Why this had to happen? Why this had to happen? Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Because see, 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 we have to understand that just because you got dropped don't mean that God don't have a pickup plan. Pick up, yes, he did. Whoa! Look at your name and say, God, God has, has a pickup pick plan. plan. Look at what he says here. So back to Samuel 9, 1 through 5. 2 Samuel 9, 1 through 5. Back to 2 Samuel 9, 1 through 5. Look at what he says in the first verse. So here David now, uh, fast forward, David is the king. And David being the king, he was reflecting on how he got to be the king. He was reflecting on who had blessed him. He was reflecting on how he became where he was. Now, I got to say this here. This is my first point right here. Reflection is good. Come on, say it again. Reflection is good. It is good to not forget the people that help you get to where you are. I can't, I can't get no help here. One of the problems we have is, as we make it big and after we get where we're going, we forget about the folk that help us get over. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. As we get to a certain place in life and we feel like we have made it, y'all ain't saying nothing. We forget about the folk who have made it over. So here, in verse, verse 1, David was reflecting on the relationships he had in his life. And those of you who know the Bible, the Bible says when that little scripture we used to say in Sunday school, may the Lord watch between me and thee while we ask one from another. Amen. That actually came from Jonathan and David. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Because David and Jonathan were so close, they were blood brothers. Amen. And so much so that when David, when Saul had to, when David had to depart from Jonathan because of Saul, uh, Jonathan said to him, may the Lord watch between you and me. While we're absent, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Isn't it good to have a friend that, even though they're not there, they're still praying for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it good to have somebody in life that, although you haven't talked to them in 20 years, you know when you call them, you're gonna get a word of encouragement? Yeah. Is it good to know that, that regardless of what's going on in your life, they're still gonna be there in your corner and support you and pray yeah. with you? Y'all ain't saying nothing. And fast for you, good God Almighty. Look at your neighbor and say, It's my turn. It's my turn. So here it is. So David, number one, it's good to reflect. David was reflecting on the relationships in his life. Notice how he didn't call up some of the sisters in his life. He didn't call up some of the soldiers in his life. But he called up the heir of his best friend. I don't know about you. Everybody should have one. And if you don't have one, you might be just as blessed. But when you have a best friend, it's somebody you can always run to. Anybody got one of them? When you got a best friend, it's somebody you can, uh, you can confide in. When you got a best friend, it's somebody you can share your deepest thoughts with. And I don't know about you, but those of you who don't have a best friend, I got one named Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, you can tell him what's ever going on in your life, and he's got an answer for you. You can tell him what's ever happening in your spirit, he's got an answer for you. Look at somebody and say, it's my turn. It's my turn. 
Amen. My dear, so David, number one, he reflected on his relationship with Jonathan. And at the point of the such, he said, is there anybody left in the lineage of Saul and Jonathan that I may share with them what they were a crucial part of me becoming? And you got to be careful here because uh, everybody who is in your past can't be in your future. Amen. Amen. Let me say this one more time. Everybody that's in your past can be in your future. Amen. Can I help you here? Because where God is trying to take you, everybody can't go. Right. Y'all don't have to take my word for it. When you go on the airplane, they stop you at the gate. Say, you can't take this in. You can't take that in. You can't take that. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. You can't take that. That bag's too big. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You got to put that bag in the department. It can't travel on the plane with you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because they understood. Watch this now. That heavy weight will ship your flight. Heavy weight. Come on. Will sink your flight. I said heavy weight will sink your flight. What kind of weight are you carrying that's causing you not to fly? I can't get no help here. Some of y'all ain't going to say nothing. Uh, let, me, let me give you a few points here. Uh, uh, write this down. Uh, heavy weight will sink your flight. Heavy weight will sink your flight. Now, I got to deal because there's only two things that, that I want to share with you that will sink your flight. The first one is, for all of you who don't know, chickens can fly. They actually can fly. Look at that. The chicken can fly. They're good for something else other than being fried. And so understand, understand that chickens can fly. But chickens, watch this, only have the mentality to only fly so high. If you take a chicken and throw him off of a high place, he's going to fly. But he's going to come down. Because his mentality is not to soar. His mentality is to run. Chickens only fly when they try to escape something. Isn't that interesting? How many times have you been a chicken? Instead of soaring over it, you were just trying to get away. I'm just going to talk to myself. Have you ever been in a situation where you, 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 uh, you, you, it was so bad, you didn't want nobody to know you was involved, you just tried to trying to get away, rather than stand foot, stand tall, and say, yes. See, the reason why a lot of us don't get our turn, because we don't own up to where we messed up. Wow. I'm just talking to myself. I done messed up so much in my life, man, I could write a book on I messed up. <laughs> y'all ain't saying nothing. But the funny part is, so can y'all. Uh -huh. But the thing is, uh, are you going to be a chicken and get high enough to get away? Are you going to change your mentality and learn to fly over it? Look at here. So the first reason why, the first reason why uh, 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 you'll get your, your flight sunk is because if you think like a chicken, you will never stand up to reality. Here it is. The reason why a lot of us can never get out turn is because we won't stand up to reality. The first part of reality is understand that I made a mistake. The second part of reality is not only that I made a mistake, but how can I uh, restore my place or the relationship that I broke in my mistake? Yeah. And then you have to be man or woman enough to go to those people, whoever it may be, or even if it's a person in the mirror that you're looking at and say, hey, you got to get this mess together. Yeah. Because believe it or not, whether your turn comes or not is actually a decision that you're going to make. There are times where getting into the path of recovery is based on your mindset. And then there are times where God will just do what we talk about in the scripture right here. He remembered the work that you did. Look at what he says here. So he says here, so Paul, so Saul says, David says, uh, are there yet any left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And I got to tell you something. Whether you know it or not, your good deeds are noted. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, my good deeds my, my good are, good are, noted. are noted. My intentions my are noted. My abilities, my abilities are noted. Are noted. My, perseverance my perseverance is noted. Is noted. My, love my love I share, I share. Continually, continually is noted. Is noted. Look, 
somebody say, it's my turn. It's my turn. Notice here in verse 2, notice here in verse 2, that when God begins to bring you up to your point where you begin to reap what you sow, somebody say, for the good. Uh, he does an investigation. So here in verse 2, uh, David is doing an investigation. He says, is there, is there anybody who knows anybody who knows anybody who knows anybody who's related to Jonathan? And you got to get this. You got to get this. Um, um, the word, the person that came forth name was Ziba. And Ziba's name mean have been found. Look at that. Look at somebody and say, I need that name. Because I, I got some stuff. Need to be found. Lord help me here. And so Zeba having been found. Now here's the funny part. It wasn't that Zeba was lost. Please don't miss this part right here. It's not that your situation is all messed up and jacked up on the floor. What it is 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 that your season <laughs> has not yet come. Good God of man. We can't keep trusting the God that says he can do everything but fail and still keep living below the poverty level. We can't keep trusting the God that says he can do everything but fail and still be broke, brunted, and disgusted. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. We can't keep serving a God that says he can do everything, but yet we're still unhappy. Look at your neighbor and say, it's my season and it's my turn. Oh, God, I feel like preaching now. you got to understand that when your season comes, amen, you don't have to do nothing, but the atmosphere knows it is time for a change. When your season comes, you don't have to make a big sign on your back, but the atmosphere will be conducive to your circumstance. You don't have to go around and say, hey, it's my turn, and I need this, and I deserve this. But when it's your season, look at your name and say, God will turn it around. Is there anybody here that needs a turn around? Is there anybody here that needs something worked out? Is it anybody here that needs God to do something? Is it anybody here that's trusting God? Is it anybody here? Look at somebody say, it's my turn. My God, help me, Holy Ghost. Look at what he says. He says, he says, it's my turn. And he says, he says, David did his history. He did his homework. And he went and looked. He went and looked and he found out that Ziba meaning had been found. Amen. Was found. What that means is, is that regardless of what you're doing, regardless of what's happening in your life, God knows where you are, and God knows whose you are. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm glad that the old folks used to say that he sits high and he looks low. Yeah. I'm glad the old folks said that he knows everywhere you go. Yeah. I'm glad the old folks used to say that he'll be a rock in a weary land. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Is there anybody here that knows all of you may feel like you've been dropped? Look at somebody and say, it's my turn. It is so Ziba means uh, have been found, and he went and talked to the king, and he said, yeah, king, uh, there is somebody that, that, that is in the family of, of Jonathan, and he had a son. I want y'all to get this here. Because a lot of us, what that means is, is that God is going to use a source unbeknownst to you. Y'all ain't saying that. God is going to use somebody you would least expect. Y'all ain't saying that. God is going to turn some stuff around, and it's not going to be because of something you did, but it's going to be because of something somebody else did. You know the song we used to sing, my mama prayed for me. Yeah. Uh -huh. Had me on her mind. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Took the time to pray for me. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad she prayed. I don't know about you, I'm so glad she prayed. Tell somebody, I'm so glad she prayed for me. Tell somebody, give the Lord a praise in here. The folks who've been praying for you, the folks who've been working for you, the folks who've been looking out for you, even though you were dropped, it's my turn. Where, 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 where is this young man? Where is this young man? In verse three, he goes into detail. He tells them where uh, Mephibosheth is, and he says, he says, and the king says, of the house of Saul, that I've been shown kindness. And 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 Ziba says unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame on his feet. Now I want y'all to get this. First of all, understand that that that, that Mephibosheth was not lame of his own doing. Please get this. Please get this. Your circumstance may not be because you did it. Your circumstance may not be because you're a failure. Your circumstance may not be because people looking at you kind of y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Your circumstance could be because God wants to show you and the world how he is still a deliverer. God wants to show you and the world how he can still bring you out of a situation that looks like nobody can get you out of. It's not because necessarily that you erred, but because God threw the air ring, amen, lift the atmosphere to change the air, so that not only could you now be an air ring, but you are now an air. Y'all didn't get it. Y'all didn't get it. 
I jump right over air and air ring to make you an heir. The Bible says that we are heir and joint heirs. Y'all ain't talking to me. Through Christ Jesus. And what that means that everything he has, we have. Everything we want, he got. Y'all ain't talking to me. Who is your name? He said, I'm an heir. I'm an heir. And it's my turn. So now we see here, we see here. In verse 3, he says, and so he asked him where this guy was. And he said, yes, he's lame on his feet. I want y'all to get this. Because just because you're lame, just because you have a disability, just because you're handicapped, just because things don't work like you want to, amen, doesn't mean that God can't use you. It doesn't mean that God can't turn it around. It doesn't mean that God is not working on your behalf. And here's what I want you to see. Just because men see you one way, it does not mean that God is not seeing you his way. I'd rather be seen like God sees me than to be seen like y'all see me any day of the week. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Because when God sees me, he sees me through my fault. When God sees me, he sees me through my problem. When God sees me, he sees me through my inability. When God sees me, he sees me through my, my doubt. When God sees me, he sees me through my fear. But what God also sees through all of that is that I am a more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Is there anybody here that regardless of what you've been dropped from, regardless of what it looks like, you can still say, I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Look at somebody and say, it's my turn. Verse 4, verse 4, he says here, verse 4, he says, And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto him, The king, behold, he is in the house of Machir, and the son of Amiel in Lodabar. Lodabar is almost like his family. Lodabar. It's below the bar. It's beneath the standard. It's Lodabar. Lodabar was where all the tall people lived. Let me just go and say it this way. Lodabar was the Jewish ghetto. We know about ghettos. You know, the ghetto don't get all the services they need. The ghetto don't get the good grocery store. They get the corner store that sell liquor. The ghetto don't get the protection of the police. They get the brutality of the police. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. The ghetto don't get the recreation center. They close down the recreation centers so that they can make sure you have no other place to use your outlet so they can keep you in crime. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. So they so they can make sure that all you can do is end up in jail, which is how other people get. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Lodabar is where uh, where you got all kinds of disputes and stuff going on and, and neighbors fighting against neighbors and gangs fighting against gangs. You got the, the bloods uh, fighting against uh, uh, the Crips and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and all the mother folks fighting against each other. Why? Because they in Lodabar. Lodabar is not just that place, but Lodabar is also to a place where you feel like you can never get out. I'm only talking to a few of y'all because I'm, I'm probably the only one that's been in a place in my life where I thought I'd never get out. Of this situation. I thought I'd never get out of thinking this way. I thought I'd never get out of thinking I was like this. I thought I'd never get out of thinking I would not be successful. I thought I'd never get out. So Lodabar is not just a certain place where it's the ghetto, but Lodabar is also a mentality. Because if you keep thinking you down here, you're going to stay down here. I dare somebody say, I'm looking up, I'm, looking and up. I'm moving up, I'm moving up. And, I'm and I'm coming up. Tell somebody, it's my turn. It's my turn. You got to understand, you got to understand that although he was in Lodabar, watch this now. See, when you stay in a bad situation long enough, you forget who you are. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Come on. If you're in a bad relationship and it's been bad a long time, you're so used to being bad in it. That you can never see yourself either getting out of it or it getting better. Yeah, yeah. I'm just talking to myself. If you're in a situation where it ain't working out right and, yeah. and stuff is all jacked up on the floor, you start thinking that this is how it's supposed to be. Uh -huh. If you mess around and find out that, that not having enough and barely making it is, is the way that it's supposed to be because that's the way your mama was, that's the way your daddy was, then you figure, oh, that must the way it's supposed to be. But I stop by to tell somebody in here, I may be in Lodabar, but I'm coming up out of there today. I may be having a bad situation, but I'm coming up out of there today. Look somebody say, it's my turn. Look at what he says here. So he said to him that he's in Lodabar. And I like this because David says, uh, 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 he's, he's, he's an heir to my brother. So that makes him my nephew. And that means that I want to share kindness to him because of what his father did for me. 
Uh huh. Because what y'all don't know is, is that when Saul the king was trying to kill David, David and Jonathan had a pact, and he said, "If I shoot the arrow to a certain time, you means run. <laughs> if I shoot it a certain way, that means it's safe right now. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And sometimes you gotta have a pact with the Holy Ghost." Lord, I'm going down the wrong path. You shoot me an arrow and let me know I need to be on this side. Lord, if something I said was wrong, Lord, shoot me an arrow in my spirit and let me know I need to be on this side. Every now and then, you got to have a pact with the Holy Ghost that keep you in line to do what you're supposed to do. Look at somebody say, it's my turn. It's my turn. Notice what it says here. And see, when you're down in Lodabar, you can forget who you are. Did not the Bible say that we are more than conquerors? Did not the Bible say that we are royal priesthood? Did not the Bible say that we are heirs and joint heirs to the kingdom of God? Did not the Bible say you were skillfully and wonderfully made? And so why are we stuck in Lodabar when we have royalty in our blood? Why are we stuck in Lodabar when we got power in our blood? Why are we stuck in Lodabar when we got majesty in our blood? Why are we stuck in Lodabar when we are anointed by the God that we serve? Look at somebody and say, it's my turn! Five, five. He says here, so, so, so I like this. He says, then David the king, watch this now. He said, he sent for him. Y'all got to get this. Y'all got to get this. There are some things, good God Almighty, I'm so excited about it, that are coming in 2023. Yes, yes, yes. And have already been sent. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, y'all don't understand this process. Let me help you understand this. You know how when you go on Google and you go on. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, uh, prime mm -hmm. and, and you order something, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you get a message that says your fat, your order has been received. Yeah. 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 And then you get another message that says your order has been shipped. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then they send you a message that say your order will be delivered soon. Yeah. Yeah. And then they give you a message. They never tell you exactly when it's gonna come. Yeah. Catch this. Okay. They never tell you exactly when it's gonna come. Right. But the fact that they gave you previous messages that said it's on the way, right, right. you rejoice it. I wish I had some help here. Wise. 
Amen. And, and he had holes drilled in him. He said, he said, so this is what you're going to do, Mr. Wise. You're just going to get your three licks. You're going to get your three days suspension. I ain't no fool. I can't get suspended. I can't go home and tell my parents, you know, I cut up again. Amen. And get suspended from school, right? So, you know, I, I ain't shoot. You ain't saying it. Just a battle. Come on with it. I put my little scrawny butt on the end. He had, he, had, he, had, he had handprints on his desk where you're supposed to put your hands. Amen. And you stood there like this right here. And before you know it, Shabaga! Come up off the ground. Y'all ain't gonna take nothing to me. All right, all right, all right. Uh -huh. This time I went through one. And he gave you three of them, boy. You left out of there, boy. Ooh, I'm going somewhere. Because sometimes life will beat you down. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Sometimes life is so unfair. Sometimes people treat you so wrong and don't even have a clue what's really going on in your life. And you leave out of those experiences going, I can't get no help here. But I got some good news for you. Because you went through that, God says, you got a payday coming. Because you went through that, God says, it's going to be your turn. And because you went through that, God will send his angels down to wherever you are to deal with whatever you're dealing with to give you your joy back. Ain't nobody saying nothing yet. To give you your peace back. I know the Bible says in Psalm 35 that we've been laying door for a night. Look at somebody say, joy, come into the morning. Look at somebody say, it's my turn. It's my turn. It's here. It's here. It's here. That, that, that David sent for him. David sent for him. And, and when he came, he thought he was in trouble because he had to go see the king. Mm -hmm. And in those days, if you had to see the prophet or you had to see the king, you were fearful because the prophet wasn't the sociable guy like we are today. Mm -hmm. The prophet wasn't the guy that took you out for coffee like we do today. Mm -hmm. The prophet wasn't the guy that was so wonderful and so nice that you just loved to be around him. No, no, in those days, the prophet was straight cut from God, didn't hold back, didn't add no sugar, and he bought it just like it was. And most of the time, when the prophet came to see you, you was in trouble. Because he had a word from the Lord, and it was probably something that you did not like. Ain't nobody ever talked to me. Uh -huh. And so what happened was that, that, that David called for him. So, so Mephibosheth was kind of, first of all, he was lame. Remember that? Secondly, he had been dropped. Remember that? And then thirdly, he forgot who he was. I can't get no help here. Some of y'all looking at me right now, forgot who you are. And because you forgot who you are, you're living like you're living. You forgot who you are because you forgot who you are. You're taking everything that the devil throws you and say, okay, but the devil is a liar. You're not going to keep running up in my life. Y'all ain't going to get me. Uh, he said, he said not going to just keep running up in my life. Y'all know that song. But look at what he says here. You can't keep allowing the devil to run up in your life with his garbage and his mess and his trash and messing up your thinking and messing up your, 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 your love and messing up your hope and messing up your faith. And then you take and say, oh, okay, that's how it's supposed to be. The devil is a liar. It's my turn to get the command, get the hell out of my house. It's my turn to get the command, get out of my family. It's my turn to get the command, get off of my job. As a matter of fact, I'm getting promoted on my job because you didn't mess with me this long. And nobody will talk to me. Look at your neighbor and say, it's my turn. So finally, when he got there before the king, he fell on his face in fear and reverence because, as I previously stated, that, you know, when you come before the king, normally it's because you did something wrong. I got some good news for some of y'all. God made it open up some stuff this week. Not because you did nothing wrong, but because he's good. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Not, not because you're so great, not because you did something wrong, not because you made a mistake. And you may have made some mistake. Everybody up in this room, everybody watching us today have made some mistake. But I'm so glad yeah. that God doesn't make our mistake be our final say. Yeah. God help me here. Aren't you glad about that? Yeah. That God doesn't make our mistake be our final say? Look at what he says. So he fell on his face and he reverenced. And David said, Mephibosheth? He answered, yes, yes, it's me. Verse 7, and he said to him, he said, uh, so David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness because of Jonathan thy father. He said, I want y'all to get this. You got some good coming yeah. because you did good. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You got some good coming because when you should have smacked the taste out of your mouth, you refrained and held back. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm probably over there wanting to knock the taste out of somebody's mouth because they said I'm out the side of their neck and I figured if I smack them in their face, amen, it would straighten their neck up and then they would act like they had some sense. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm probably over there here. I never had to deal with that. Y'all laughing, y'all laughing. Just the other day, uh, yesterday, two days, my wife and I throw in face. These people that actually sit up and smack each other in the face. It's a sport. It's a sport. To see, to see who can take the hardest smack. And what y'all don't know is, is that's how the devil operates. Mm -hmm. 
He tried to smack you with something that you weren't prepared for to see if you can take it. But the good part is, you ain't got to take it. All you got to do is say, Jesus. And when you call his name, the effect of the smack goes away and it reverberates and it goes back to the sender. Y'all ain't talking to me. Look, somebody said, send it back to the sender. I think we're going to go home on that one. See, it's your season now, and everything else that comes that ain't like God, send it back to the sender. Uh huh. They're talking about your cock out, don't respond, just say, send it back to the sender. They're looking at you cock out like you stinked, that's okay. I put some deodorant on, I'm sending it back to the sender. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. If they're talking about you because you don't have everything that everybody else has, it, that's okay. You're laughing at me now, but give my God some time. Look at your name and say, give my God some time. Because I realize that it is my time. It is my season. It is. I'm going through the process now. But when I get out of this, the Bible says it this way. Or the psalmist says that, that, it, that when you come through, you come out as pure gold. Yeah. But you can't purify gold if you don't have no heat. Y'all need to talk to me. And the problem is that while we're in the heat, we got to say it's still my turn. You can't look back because it's not happening now. You got to say it's still my turn. You can't get mad because it happened quick enough. You got to say it's still my turn. And boy, when I get to my turn, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to praise God for what he's done. The psalmist said this way, if it had not been for the Lord, come on, who was on my side, y'all ain't saying nothing, where would I be? How many times did God have delivered you you didn't know you needed to How many did God turn around you didn't know he was turning around? How many times did God make a way out of nowhere you didn't know you needed a way? Well, how many times you knew you needed a way and you called on God and he delivered anyway? How many times you called on God he made a way anyway? Look at the next thing, it's my time. say this, you know, sometimes you reap stuff because they're your parents. Come on. Sometimes you reap stuff because they're your cousins. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's bad because, you know, guilty by association can be a good thing, mm -hmm. and it can be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're guilty by association, if it's something bad, amen, then you got to run. Mm -hmm. Wow. Or stand up to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, what he says here is that just because you related to him, I'm going to bless you. Yeah. I want y'all to get this before we go home on this one. Just because I'm related to him, mm -hmm. I'm going to get a blessing. Yeah. Anybody in here related to him? Yeah. Just because I'm related to him, yeah. my breakthrough is coming. Yeah. Just because I'm related to him, I'm going to look past what you just said. And I'm going to trust God's attention anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I'm related to him, I'm going to be the head <laughs> and not the tail. Yeah. Just because I'm related to him, I'm going to be above yeah. and not beneath. Yeah. Just because I'm related to him, I'm going to be healed yeah. and not sick. Just because I'm related to him, I'm going to be anointed yeah. and not cursed out. Just because I'm related to him, I'm going to be able to walk with my head up. Yeah. Just because I'm related to him, I'm going to be able to watch God work it out. Look, somebody say, he will, he will work, it out. work it out. It's my turn. It's my Just because I'm related to him, I'm going to be able to call those things that are not <laughs> as though they were. Just because I'm related to him, I'm going to be able to look at something bad and say, there's something good in that bad thing right there. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. Look at yourself. Nobody ever thought you would have made it this far. Nobody ever thought you would have been all right. Nobody ever thought you would have been able to go through this. But look at somebody say, something good came out of something bad. And it's because it's my turn. Come on, somebody shout, it's my turn. Somebody shout, it's my turn. Somebody shout, it's my turn. Look at what he says, look at what he says. He says, and because of your father, say, watch this now. He says, I'm going to restore, look at what he says, of thee all the land of Saul thy father and thy shell. Watch this. First of all, he says, he's going to give back to you what the canker worm stole. What your tears cry over. He's gonna give back to you what your heart was broken over. He's gonna give back to you how you were disappointed by so-called friends. He's gonna give back to you what the church folk did to you and just tried to destroy you. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Look at somebody and say, he giving it back. Because it's my turn. I need about 10 seconds. Somebody just give God a give me back praise. Come on, I need somebody just to give God a praise. Because I got some stuff that's coming back.
my turn. It's my, it's my turn. I'm tired of fighting with this issue. It's my turn. I'm tired of looking at everybody else. It's my turn. I'm tired of seeing how come they can and I can't. It's my turn. I'm tired of being down in low the bar. Look at somebody say, it's my turn. I'm tired of having to fight for what belongs to me. It's my turn. I'm tired of having to argue that seven for less. It's my turn. Look at somebody say, it's my turn. Give it to me, give it to me. Man, yes, man. Yes, man. 
Amen. When I was coming up, we used to say, give me five. On the flat man side. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Y'all don't know nothing about that right there. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Amen. But you got to understand that God wants to give us some bread. God wants to give us some nourishment. God wants to give us some restoration. God wants to give us some strength. God wants to give us some hope. Look at somebody and say, it's my time. And my time is now. Give me some bread, man. Give me some bread. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Feed me till I want the more. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Feed my soul. And the Bible says that while they were walking down the road, while they were coming in the desert, that they were hungry. And God gave them manna. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. He fed them bread from heaven. Don't you know that when you look up to your heavenly father and you say, Lord, I praise you. And you say, Lord, I give you glory. And you say, Lord, I thank you. He'll rain down. Look at somebody say, he'll make it rain. He'll bring down your joy. He'll make it rain. He'll bring down your peace. He'll make it rain. He'll bring down your love. Doing yeah. what God is doing yeah. 
in your life. There's people in church that are afraid to go with you and, 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 and curse what you're doing. Because they can't see how God going to work it out. They, they, they're people that look at you cockeyed and, and, and talk at you funny because they can't see. They see what mess you're in. They see what happened. They see, they, they see that the roof fell off of the house instead of praying that we can get it fixed. They, mm -mm, girl, did you know what happened? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because they can't see what God is getting ready to do. I'm, I'm trying to get y'all ready. Put your seatbelt on because I want y'all to get ready because God is getting ready to do something that he can't show everybody he's going to do it. But after he do it, everybody's going to know that he did it. That's why sometimes it gets so piled up that you can't fix it because you got to recognize that only he can fix it. And when he fixed it, you can't take the credit for it. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Look at somebody and say, I'm not going to take the credit for this one. Because when God do this, everybody going to know it was him. And it was my turn. <laughs> so you got to understand, no matter what's going on right now, you got to know that God is working it out. So you got to close your door. Sometimes you got to turn your plate down. Sometimes you got to fast a little bit. Sometimes you got to pray a little bit. Sometimes you got to get off the telephone. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Sometimes you got to get off the telephone and stop calling people and stop talking to people and stop worrying about what everybody's saying. Stop worrying about what everybody's thinking. Sometimes you just got to say, Lord, it's you and me. And while we get here, I'm going to shut the door. Look at somebody say, shut the door. And then you got to get in there and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. And then the prophet told her, go ahead and start pouring. And when you begin to get shut in with God, and you start seeking God, and you start trusting God, and you start thanking him in advance, that it's your turn. You start pouring out a little bit, and before you know it, that oil just keep on pouring. There it is right there. It says he'll be there continually. That oil just keep on flowing. That oil just keep on going. That oil just keep on going. That oil just keep on going. And what y'all don't know is they was in a famine. Y'all ain't talking to me. And I like it because God does his best work when the odds are against you. Y'all ain't gonna say that. God does his best work when everybody has already said you're gonna fail. God does his best work when everybody said you ain't gonna be nothing. God does his best work when the lawyer said you're going to jail. God does his best work when they said we're gonna take everything you got. God does his best work when he said you ain't nobody, your mama won't nobody, your grandpa. It wasn't nobody, but so you ain't gonna do nothing. But I stop by to tell you, it's my turn. And when it's my turn, the blessings of heaven will fall out. When it's my turn, the angels will come and find me. When it's my turn, the Lord will open up the windows of heaven. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Pour you all a blessing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If you won't have open up the seed, y'all ain't saying nothing. Look at that and say, it's my turn. Sent your deliverance. Always 
church. Yeah. Remember what I told you now. You can't, you can't have a, a mindset like a chicken because a chicken will only, only fly to get away. Yeah. You only fly to get away. That's why you only fly so high. I don't know why I want to fly higher than four feet. The artist says, I believe I can fly. That's what he said. He said, I believe I can touch the sky. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. And here's the prophetic part of this song that he wrote that y'all didn't even realize was prophetic. He said, I think about it every night and day. Spreading his wings. He didn't say he was doing it. He said he thought about it. If you take the context of the song, he never said he did fly. He just said, I believe I can fly. So imagine what you can do if you believe in the God that you serve. Imagine what we would do if we just believe in the God that we serve. Because the scriptures are simple. It says, I believe I can fly. And I don't know about you. I'm trusting God every day. I'm trusting God every minute. Every minute, every minute. That is my turn. I'm tired of being the secretary. Yes, yes. I'm tired of being the one everybody looking. Well, you know, you know. Mm-hmm. Scripture Bible says it's my turn. It's my, it's my turn. turn. And I unapologetically say it nice and loud. It's my turn. It's, it's my, my turn. turn. <laughs> Which I can tell you to be humble. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Which I tell you to be humble. Hallelujah. Yes, I am on my knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But every now and then you just gotta say. It's my turn. I'm not taking second to that. I'm not letting you judge me because you think you know where I've been. Because here's the for real, for real. If you ain't been in my shoes, that's right, that's right. You really don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Don't make an assumption about something you don't have a clue about. Thank God for the word today. And I want to encourage somebody today. It's your turn. Amen. You didn't been through enough. Yeah. You've been faithful. You've done the best you could. You did all you could do. You did all you knew you did. Oh, we thank you, Lord. See, one of the problems is that people get offended when you do all you know to do. And they know to do more and didn't help you. Because what people get offended is, people get offended because, they, well, well, you should have did this. Well, maybe I didn't know. If you saw me struggling, right. why didn't you say something? Right. 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 Well, I would have made that decision. You should have said something when you when I saw you last week. Well, you saw me. Right. You saw the holes in my shoes. Well, that's right. That's right. That's right. Why don't you why why don't you either one ask me what size my shoe was? That's right. And see if you had some shoes in your closet, I could fit. Ooh. Okay. Good. Or, 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 or say, man, I'll take you somewhere. Come pick me up and, and, and take me to a shoe store and buy me a pair of shoes. That's right. That's right. Because Jesus said this way. He said, he said you, you, you're going to stand before him and say, Lord, I did. He's going to say, no, 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 no. He said, he said, when you saw my hunger, you didn't feed me. Mm-hmm. When they need clothes, you didn't clothe them. Mm-hmm. You just looked down on me because I ain't there no more. Mm-hmm. Don't ever get so big. That's right. So high That's right. and so mighty That's right. and so successful mm-hmm. that you can reach down and help somebody right. like you. Right. Amen. Somebody Amen. say amen. 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 Somebody say it's my turn. It's my amen. turn. Amen. amen. So we thank God for your being here today. And I pray this word is able to encourage you to know that it's your turn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My, your turn is coming. Your turn is here. Yes. And all you got to do, because see, the key in this message was that even though Mephibosheth was down in Lodabar, he was down in a place where, you know, it was the, the, the Jewish ghetto, the, the place of no man's land, the place of hopelessness, that God had already sent his deliverance. And here's the hope. All that might look a little bleak right now, guess what? God has already sent your help. God has already sent your financial blessing. God has already sent your deliverance. God has already sent what you need to get out of where you are. So you got to say to yourself, yes, yes. it's my turn. It's my turn. I told y'all, uh, uh, when, when I ordered something on Prime on uh, uh, Amazon 
come upon, they send you a message and say, we receive your order. <laughs> Do you know that the angels have already received Hallelujah. your order? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Ah. Then the second one is, uh, we're preparing to ship yes. your order. Y'all ain't saying that. Look at my say, my stuff is being shipped. My stuff is being shipped. <laughs> and then they send you another, the third message that says, it should be arriving in two to three days. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. See, there's a level of expectancy. Anybody here expecting it to happen? Anybody here expecting God to do it? Anybody here got your eyes on? I'm waiting for the UPS man to show up and say, put it on my doorstep. And finally, when you least expect it, you're going to come out the house on your way to go to the grocery store. And oop, there it is. Coming back from the laundry mat, take your car, your stuff out the out the car, and turn around and oops, there it is. Y'all ain't saying that. You gonna be on the phone talking to somebody, and and you gonna think you hear the doorbell. Was that the doorbell? Let me go, girl. Let me go check this. I I call you back, and you gonna go out there, open the door, and oops, there it is. God has already sent your blessing. It's coming your way. And I just want to declare to you all tonight that it is your turn to be blessed. It is your turn to be delivered. It is your turn to be happy. It is your turn to finally be relieved of the mindset of others and the negativity of others. Because everybody's got something to say about you. But the question is yours. God said it's your time. So we pray this with you. Come on, let's get the Lord of this place in the house. Come on, give me you better than that. Can we give it a praise in here? It's your time. It's your time. We thank God. Come on, if you receive that blessing, come on, raise your hands and give God some praise. It is your time. It is your time. If you're talking to me, you haven't yet accepted Jesus Christ in your life. It's real simple. Unless you're driving right now, you wouldn't know. Just raise your hand and say, Lord, Lord come into my life. I'm going to make you Lord and Savior. Of my, life. of my life because, because it, is it is my time. My time. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Come on, if you receive it, we thank God for you. Find yourself a good church home and begin to continue to praise God because it is, it is your, your time. time. Somebody give him one more good oh, praise. Amen. We thank God. If this message has been a blessing to you, you want to partner with us, if you want to help us continue to do things, we're going to do this how we do it. We're going to send you away here. And do Harvest. Amen. The first thing we do is give Givelify. You can partner with us through Givelify. You can show up at this ministry to help us continue to do the things we do to be a blessing to the community and those who listen and hear this word of God. The second way we do it is Cash App. Amen. That's dollar sign New Harvest Word. Amen. And you can participate today and any day. You give to us so we can help support us in this area so we can do the things that God's called us to do. That is to take care of the community and helping people in need. There's another way to do it, and that's a new system called Venmo. Amen. And that is new dash harvest dash one eight nine. New dash harvest dash one eight nine. And you can sort to the ministry that way. Yeah. And and there's one more way we do it. For those of you who like to do it the old fashioned way, amen. You can put it in the mail and you can send it to two North Terrace Street, Baltimore, Maryland, two one two two three. Two North Terrace Street, Baltimore, Maryland, two one two two three. Amen. And we'll be so grateful to receive your contributions to us that we can be a blessing to the Lord, be a blessing to the community, and be a blessing to you as you receive this word. So as we leave you on today, we'll leave you with this one message. Remember that it is your turn. We love you. God bless you. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise and we'll see you.